Hey everyone, welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 beginner tips I wish I knew sooner. So these are things that I learned along the way that I found to be super helpful and if someone had shown me from the start, it would have saved me a lot of time and headaches. But anyway, that's how you learn. So let's get into it. The first tip we're going to talk about is planes. If you've been using Fusion 360 for any length of time, you'll know that all sketches need to be created on a specific plane. And having that plane in the right place is key to having a working drawing. So we're going to look at a couple of ways to create new planes. To create a new construction plane, you go up to Construct and select an option there. The three that I use most often are Offset Plane, Plane at Angle, and plane along path. The offset plane is pretty straightforward. You simply select offset plane and click on an existing surface or plane and then set the distance between the two planes, the new one and the existing one. The next plane I use is plane at angle. With plane at angle you can construct a plane at a specific angle to a line that you've created. In this example, I'm making a plane at an angle to one of the sides of a square that I drew. I could have done an offset plane from the left or right plane with a specific distance. But now if I change the size of my square, the plane at angle will still be in the correct place. Namely, on the line I created. The next plane I use is plane along path. I use this one a lot when I'm creating a sweep profile. In this drawing I have a path and I want to sweep a shape along this path. So what I'm going to do is select construct, plane along path and then you select your path. You'll be able to specify where on that path you'd like your plane to be. So over here I've set it to the end. Now I'll draw a shape on this new plane. Select OK. Now select the sweep tool and you'll see that I can sweep that shape along the path I've created. Next we're going to look at projecting lines. If you're wanting to use lines from a previous sketch on a new sketch, either on the same or on a different plane, you can simply press P and it will bring up the project menu. You can now select the geometry you want to project. Once you select OK, you'll see that the line has turned purple, indicating that it is a projected line and not a line you have sketched. There are lots of instances where this can save time and be very helpful in the design process. Number three, center about the origin. Drawing your sketch around the origin is really helpful if you have certain parts of the sketch that are symmetric. Using the origin as a reference for dimensions and constraints is super helpful. It also makes it simple when it comes to mirroring both sketch lines and bodies, or even features. If you're designing something that has a few bodies that interact or require precise positioning, then having them centered on the origin will make things a bit easier as your design gets more complex. Number four, use formulae and references to dimension where possible. Dimensioning a sketch is pretty straightforward, but sometimes when you're working on a design, you'll find that you need to change dimensions if the requirement of your model changes. In this example, I have a simple rectangle and I can dimension them both easily at 100 and 50 millimeters respectively. Then we extrude it up and have a model. But now if I need that block to change in size, I'll have to update all my dimensions manually. In a situation where you know ratios will remain the same, you can use a formula and reference to give the side a dimension. Here I've changed the top dimension to be a formula that references the dimension shown on the left. And all that is needed to update the whole sketch is to change the one on the left. 
Obviously this is a very simple example, but you get the idea. So using this technique, you can save time and also reduce errors caused by potentially forgetting to update a certain dimension. Number five, shortcut search function. When I got started on Fusion, I was not aware that there was a shortcut function, and I spent a lot of time trying to remember where a certain tool was located. I later found that by pressing the S key, it would bring up a shortcut menu. You can just type in the function or tool you're looking for. Here you can see I'm able to scale the model just by pressing S and typing in scale, then selecting scale model. Another benefit I found is you end up coming across functions you never knew existed. Number six, construction lines. If you're new to Fusion, you may not be aware that you can create construction line. On the right of your sketch menu, you can change the line type to construction. This allows you to add center lines or reference lines that won't form part of the final geometry of your sketch, but will be integral in getting the desired dimensions and organizing your sketch appropriately. Number seven, inspect tool. The inspect tools are extremely helpful when it comes to measuring angles, distances, circumference, area, and various other things. But that's just the measure tool. One that I use all the time, especially when modeling things with a complex internal structure, is section analysis. Here you can see in this sketch that I've selected the section analysis tool and as I move through the model I'm able to see the hidden geometry that I otherwise would not have been able to see. Number eight, use of pattern feature. So the pattern tool is pretty straightforward. It's for when you have features that repeat themselves. Here you can see I'm using the rectangular pattern. I'm able to create a repeating pattern of these rectangles in the sketch. This can be done with sketch objects as well as bodies and features. Here you can see I'm using rectangular pattern on the body instead of the sketch. Number nine, emboss on a curved surface. If you're looking to add text or shape onto a curved surface, it can be quite tricky. But the emboss tool is perfect for that. Once you've created your sketch or text, you simply select the emboss tool, then select the sketch profile, then the target face and specify emboss or deboss. Then you can see by setting the depth, we can either make it go in deeper or stand out further. Number 10, project include 3D geometry. So I was trying to make a propeller and I had no idea how I was gonna do it and then I came across Project Include. For this example, I used the Coil tool to set the shape that I wanted. Then I went into Project Include, just in any sketch, and I was able to use it to loft between. So that gave me the shape that I wanted. You can also use it for custom springs and a bunch of other stuff. These are just a couple of things to keep in mind when you're designing your sketch. Having a firm understanding of the basics is really helpful when you're getting started. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe or leave a comment down in the comment section. Till next time, bye.